If you've done any work at all with a data warehouse, you're probably dealing with partitioned tables. Now, using partition tables doesn't mandate the use of a facility called Exchange Partition, but Exchange Partition is a very, very effective way of consolidating or loading data into your systems with minimal impact to the existing workload. Sometimes the act of loading data requires a lot of preliminary steps. We need to cleanse the data, we need to transform it, etc. Rather than do that against your live production tables, which are currently being aggressively queried by users, you might choose to do that in isolation into its own table, therefore not impacting anyone. The problem then, of course, comes, how do I get that data into my large, genuine, true production partitioned table? And that's where Exchange Partition comes in very useful. However, you would think that if I have two tables with the same structures, one being partitioned, one being non-partitioned, an exchange would be an absolute no-brainer. But let me give an example where things that look simple might not be as simple as they seem. Here's my table called PAR. It's a partition table, hence the name, and it's got two partitions, P1 and P2. This table is a very simple structure. It's just got a couple of columns, X and Y. I'm going to create a non-partition table, exchange PAR, with the exact same structure. In fact, to make sure I've got the same structure, I'll just do a select star from PAR to get me the same two columns, X and Y. And let's assume I've loaded that with some data, and I now want to exchange that into my partitioned table. I run the usual command, alter table par, exchange partition with my template table. And even though I did a create table of select to ensure the columns were the same, I get this error that there's a column type size or mismatch. Now that's a bit strange. If you're familiar with exchange partition, maybe it's to do with, for example, the data or the constraints, etc. So maybe I'll try this option. I'll say, let's do an exchange without validation. Maybe that will bypass that error. But unfortunately, no, the same error comes back out. At this point, you might be starting to get very confused, so you might start delving into the data dictionary. If I dig into user tab columns, I can see the column ordering for both tables, par and exgh par, are the same. There's nothing different there, so what's going on? The trick here is, rather than looking at user tab columns, you want to look at user tab cols, which is a slightly different data dictionary view. User tab cols also shows you the hidden columns in your table. If I go look at my par table, I can see that there's this strange column in there, which doesn't have a column ID, but it's got this cryptic sys prefix name that tells me that that's why there's a difference between the par table and my exchange partition table template. How did that strange column get there? Well, originally my partition table had a third column, a column Z, but at some stage in its evolution over the life cycle of this application, the column had been dropped or marked unused. Why did I not drop the column? Well, if you drop a column from a table in an Oracle database, we laboriously work through every single row and remove that piece of data. On a warehouse table, in particular a large partition table, that could take hours, weeks, or days and generally isn't a practical use of your time. If you need to get rid of a column in a database, the easiest way is just to set it unused. We don't touch the data, but we no longer have that column accessible to us for queries and the like. So someone's just done set unused, leaving that column remnant behind now with its hidden name. And that's why my partition table no longer actually matches that of the exchange table template I'm trying to swap in. Now, how do we work around this? You might be thinking, well, there was a column called Z in my partition table. I'll just add a column called Z to my exchange template table, and then I'll drop it as well or set it unused. That should bring them back into sync. But unfortunately, it doesn't because precision really matters here. We saw that column Z was the second column in the partition table. Simply by adding it here to my exchange table, it was the third column. Therefore, that alignment is not yet there, and therefore we cannot continue with the exchange operation. To overcome it, I need to drop my exchange partition table recreate it with the column Z in the right place, then set it unused, and then I can finally go ahead and do the exchange. However, things obviously could be a lot worse than that. There are various ways in which the Oracle database adds hidden columns without your knowledge, not just set unused. Things like extended statistics, uh, fast column add defaults, various operations add hidden columns there. And if you don't know the entire history of your partition table, it could be very hard to craft an exchange partition matching version in order to which you do your exchange partition successfully. Surely there's a better way. 
And yes, there is. You now have a facility where you can tell the database, I have a table that is going to be used exclusively to exchange information with a partition table. So I want to go get all the underlying hidden columns and anything else in terms of definition from the partition table and build a table based on that information. We can effectively say this table is for exchange and that is the syntax. I simply create table for exchange with the nominated partition table. Once I've done that, alter table exchange partition just works as you'd expect it to for any table. So if you're using exchange partition, then your first port of call now when you're creating template tables to use for exchange is use the for exchange syntax. It's available in all supported versions of the Oracle database.